So as everyone knows, I treat middle age and older men. I don't treat men under 30 unless they have true hypogonadism. And there's a couple of reasons for that. It's just that there's so many older men that need it that don't know it. I treat a lot of men with prostate cancer and, and other issues. So I treat men basically 40 and above. Yes, I have some in their 30s, but, but for the most part, it's, a, it's an older age group, 40 and above. And what I do is bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Now there's testosterone replacement therapy, which is just testosterone itself, which may be adequate for many men in their teens and 20s, of course. But when you get above 40, it becomes about bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, meaning that we're addressing all the hormones and we're trying to address the age-related decline that occurs in all of us. It's about prevention of age-related disease, disability, dependence, and frailty. It's about never suffering the symptoms of a deficiency. It really is about prevention, but prevention is a hard concept, Dave, because we've all been taught from a very young age. We only go to the doctor. We only go when we're sick, when we feel ill. We don't go when we feel good. We don't, we're not taught about prevention. But what this is really about is about prevention. I was listening to a lecture, a very good cancer specialist a year or two ago, and he pointed out that, look, these cancer cells, when you get diagnosed with cancer in your 60s or 70s, it didn't develop last year or even two years ago. It started developing decades before. So what some of these men start doing in their late 30s, basically 40 and above, is going to make a significant impact on their health and well-being decades down the road. So we don't wait for these older men 40 and above to get symptoms of a deficiency. We're preventing the symptoms of the deficiency from ever developing. And that's really what it's about. It's understanding that each and every hormone has beneficial effects, but they work synergistically. Now, that's a little different sometimes, and we don't give contradictory advice. We, we are basically, we're on the same page in, in literally every facet. So it kind of differs in the advice that you give these younger men that are less than 30. So why don't you talk to us about how you kind of approach that age group of men, since that's not my age population that I treat. Sure, absolutely. I, I, I like the way that you look at um, hormone replacement from just to touch on what you said. And the way that I, I use the analogy is that, we again, I'm coming back to cars all the time, but we know that if your car needs a service, if you keep driving it, you're going to make the problem worse. And if you know the wheels are going to fly off and you know you don't need to wait for a massive crisis to happen before you go to the mechanic, you go earlier to prevent the bill from being huge. But in this case, we're not talking about a bill for your car. We're talking about your health. You only get one body. So I really like this approach of focusing on longevity through hormone optimization because you're protecting against the diseases of aging, which are basically left to manifest. It leaves the body wide open, which is what we particularly, it's not, not what we, but it's what the medical industry has been much better at identifying in women in menopause. All their diseases of aging risk goes through the roof. And one thing that we know for sure, well, I would hope most people know for sure, I know that you at tier one do because you, you your wife treats women. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. You don't just treat one hormone in menopause. Um, and it's the same with age-related hormone decline in men. Um, it's not just testosterone, just like it's not just progesterone in women. It's, it's all hormones that go down. And it, where, where there's smoke, there's fire. So if you're old enough to have low testosterone from age, there is a very good chance, unless you're an outlier, that you have also begun to decline in other hormones. It just wouldn't make sense otherwise. I guess the thing that's different when, and, and I, I also treat older men, and I treat older men very similarly to how Dr. Keith Nichols does. Um, but when I treat younger men, it's a little bit different because they're not dealing with age-related hormone decline. They're dealing with what I believe, well, sometimes it's just poor diet and lifestyle. But a lot of the time we're getting these younger guys who are coming up who are 21, 22, they're healthy, they're doing everything right to, to the point that it's almost a bit weird. They're doing mm -hmm. everything perfectly. And they've got lower testosterone levels than you'd see in the average 65 to 70 year old. Correct. And I think this is a result of endocrine disruption, potentially <laughs> unhealthy parents, exposure to all, there's so many different things. It's the perfect storm. But I haven't found that those things are impacting the levels of DHEA, sometimes thyroid, actually. Thyroid's very common, but yes. the adrenal hormones like pregnenolone and DHEA, I haven't found to be too impacted in these younger men. I mean, when you get these guys come in with these really low levels of testosterone, sometimes they have even above range levels of DHEA naturally because they're 21. That's where they're meant to be. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be very rare to get to it, get to the age of, let's say, 50 years old and have low testosterone and have robust levels of these other hormones. It would be very, very rare. So 
that's the the difference that we're talking about here. And, and one of the things that I think is a bit of a myth in the space, and, and this is where people probably think we're going to have a debate and an argument, but in fact, we're just going to agree on it, is that a lot of the time these younger guys think that going on testosterone replacement therapy is causing their low pregnenolone and DHEA levels because they've disrupted this system. And while it does reduce the levels in the testicles or in the ovaries in a, in, in a woman when we're looking at the knockout of luteinizing hormone activity, the thing that, that Dr. Keith Nichols has picked up very well, and, and it's why it's so important, I actually referred a, a gentleman over to Keith uh, this week who came to me who was on TRT, but he was in his 60s and the other hormones hadn't been addressed yet. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is exactly what Keith talks about, mm -hmm. is that once you get to that age, the synergy between the hormones is so important. And, and I like to kind of, when Keith talks about how some of these hormones you feel, some of them you don't, I refer to them a little bit differently, kind of similar. I look at hormones like testosterone, DHEA, and thyroid as accelerators, and things like pregnenolone and melatonin as the brakes. And if you've got a deficiency in your brakes and accelerators, and you come in and crank up one accelerator, you've now created a bigger discrepancy between all these hormones. You've created further, you've fixed a problem, but now you've created more because you've got further imbalance. And that's why it's so important, but not only just is it important from like a, a pragmatic standpoint, but from an outcome standpoint. If you take a gentleman who's deficient in all these hormones and you just put testosterone in there, he'll come in and think, oh, testosterone is going to fix all my problems because it sounds cool. It's marketable. It's, we, it's like selling a thirsty guy a glass of water. Everyone wants more testosterone. But in reality, it's pregnenolone, DHEA, thyroid, melatonin all together that actually do what guys are hoping testosterone will do. Well, well said. I, I tell my middle-aged and older men that, look, when they come in, Dave, they, have you, as you just made the statement, they, they're all in on testosterone. All in. Hey, some, most of them, you know, hey, the more the better, but they're all in on testosterone. And I tell these men that, look, the way you win this mind game, this battle between your ears, is that you need to approach every one of those hormones as you do testosterone. The better the levels, the better the benefits. That's what this is all about. We're trying to obtain optimal levels so that you obtain more benefit from each hormone and at the same time balancing that against any unwanted side effects. And so that's really the, the point that I get. And uh, men will say, well, I've been told that, you know, I don't need these other hormones, especially if I got normal levels. And they're at 40, 50, 60 years old. You realize that the normal levels for 40, 50, and 60-year-old men for like DHEA, for instance, is a lot lower than the normal range for a 22-year-old man that's over 400. So mm -hmm. the goal to what we're doing is maintaining these levels as you age in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, just as they were when you were in your 20s, so in an optimal level. And I'll ask those men, so you're okay with testosterone? Yep, uh, that's what I want. Well, your levels are normal. Why do you want testosterone if your levels are normal? Well, because I've, I've read that it didn't matter if they're normal. I still, I, I could still have problems. Well, that is correct. You read that correct. But yet you're willing to start testosterone at your age with a normal level, but you're not willing to start any of your other hormones, foundational hormones, because you have normal levels. That doesn't make sense to me. And the reason is, is because, you know, the two feel good hormones, the two that you can really base on symptomatic improvement, of course, are going to be thyroid and testosterone. You know, mm -hmm. I could literally base my adjustments really on, 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 on clinical symptomatology and improvement. A lot of those other hormones, Dave, uh, you know, like the DHEA, the pregnenolone, the vitamin D3, for instance, look, we really don't notice it when we take it for the most part. Now, mm -hmm. now look, let's make sure we, we kind of set the ground rules right here real quick. Dave, and I'm going to make a point by asking just a few simple questions. Dave, can you take Tylenol without any problems? Sorry, what's the generic name for Tylenol? We don't call it Tylenol. In Australia. Can I take it without any problems? Yeah, in the short me, term, yeah. Me too. Okay, can you take uh, Advil, ibuprofen? In the short term, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, so you can literally take certain medications, over-the-counter medications without any problems at all, right? Yes. Now, remember, absolutely. there's going to be people out there that are going to say, I can't take Tylenol. It makes me sick. It gives me a headache. I can't do it. I can't take ibuprofen, makes me sick, does this, that, or other. I can't take, you know, Benadryl. Look, when we talk to these men about these hormones, we are talking to the 95.9 or 99.5% of people that can tolerate it. Everybody out there, when they hear a video like you or mine, oh, I can't take DHEA. Oh, yeah, when I take DHEA, I know it. It just, that's okay. I'm, uh, that's good to know. But the majority of us can't tell it especially 40 and above, when we take these hormones like vitamin D3. 
Now, you can know when you're vitamin D3 deficient when it's been a long time. Yes, it can cause fatigue and other issues. But the point is, is that I'm really trying to make is that we're not speaking to you guys that are those so-called 1% outliers that feel it when you take it or, or just have all kinds of issues when you take it. The majority of us, and when you look at the studies and older men and women that do take these hormones, they don't have really many problems with it. All right. So, so the point is, is that, so these other hormones, since they don't have tremendous feel good effects, we do try to optimize levels. And that's when we do maybe aim for levels uh, with these other hormones, whereas testosterone and thyroid, I'm not aiming for a level. I'm treating for symptomatic improvement. So I just wanted to make the distinction there and that they, they understand why we do what we do. And so the majority of us can take these without any problems. But if you can't take it, if you can't tolerate it, then either take it in a lower dose or don't take it at all. Let's don't make something that should be very simple, more complicated than it is. We're using bioidentical hormones. You are an advocate for, as, as we all should be, micronized, sustained or loose pharmaceutical grade hormones. They work the best. You've said it over and over again. You've done a great job <laughs> and all your information. So I just want to make sure that people do understand that that's what we're doing with hormone optimization, especially in my age group. We're preventing age related to decline. We're maximizing levels to maximize benefits. There's a dose response relationship. That's all it is. Daniel Rousier, my, my good friend and colleague, mentor, uh, as he says, he wants his on his grave, he wants it to say, what do you want your levels to be? That's all he wanted us to say. What do you want your levels to be? So I'll always ask men, these are what the hormones do. What would you want your levels to be? I can make them low so you get low effects of the hormone. I can give you mid-range levels and you can have mid-range effects. Or I can give you an optimal level so that you can maximize those benefits of that hormone. Which would you like? Oh, Doc, I want to I want to maximize it. So that's kind of my our, our take. That's what Hormone optimization is in, in our world. It's just, it's just that. It's not complicated. It shouldn't be complicated. Uh, we'll talk about all these other add-ons a lot of other clinics want to do. <laughs> and, you know, you send an email to me, like, whether it be HCG and these other things. And uh, so it's just, uh, it just doesn't need to be complicated. You've identified just how simple it should be, and it is.